Hey everyone, welcome back and happy Saturday. All right guys, so welcome to the second channel. And again, I've been saying this all day, Thank you so much to the Adams family. We just officially hit 200,000 on the first channel subscribers, and we're about to hit 35,000, I believe, on the second channel, which we recently started not too long ago. So you guys are killing it. Thank you for all of the love, and we are not going to stop bringing you all of the content. Now we're back to talk about Kim Zolciak and Corey Bierman. Again, the story, the gift that just keeps on giving. And then, of course, Monica's mom from the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, she's speaking up. So let's get into it. Smash that like button, show some love, and let's jump right in. All right, guys. So I wanted to talk about this first because I think that this is a big deal. Um, Kim Zolciak and Croy Beerman have been ordered to pay $230,000 in a bank lawsuit. Now, Page Six came out with this and said, the financial woes seem to be never ending for Kim Zolciak and Croy Bierman. A court in Georgia ordered the estranged couple to pay Simmons Bank over $230,000 after the pair defaulted on a home equity line of credit, according to court documents obtained by TMZ. Per the outlet, the Real Housewives of Atlanta alum and the former NFL star owe a total of $231,000 $31.61, which includes $178.51 in interest and $2,071.57 in foreclosure fees and $1,945.31 in attorney's fees. The ruling comes just three months after the bank filed the lawsuit against Bierman and Zolciak. So as you guys know, the pair... They've been battling serious money issues in recent months amid their ongoing divorce. And in August, the twosome was sued by Sachs and Capital One for more than $150,000 in unpaid credit card fees after Kim stopped making payments on the card in September of 2022. In May, it was also revealed that the reality star owes the IRS $1.1 million in unpaid taxes, interest, and penalties from 2013, 2017, and 2018. What is going on with the not paying our taxes, guys? That same month, Croy told police that his estranged wife gambled away over $1.5 million throughout their 11-year marriage. Then in June, Target also slapped the pair with a lawsuit, claiming that they failed to pay off their $2,482.24 balance with the retailer. However, the couple was recently granted the ability to sell their $6 million Georgia home, which was previously facing foreclosure. Hmm. You guys know that. If the property sells for its high asking price, the pair may be able to relieve themselves of some financial stress. At least that's what they told the judge. In August, the former Atlanta Falcons player begged the judge to allow them to sell the estate so that they could pay off their significant debt. Thankfully, the magistrate agreed to Croy's plea, meaning the strange couple hopefully won't be living under the same roof for much longer. Thank God, because we do not need you guys to continue exhausting emergency services. In fact, the judge ultimately decided that it would be best for the pair who have gotten into several explosive fights since their split to have designated sections in the home for the time being. According to court documents obtained by Page Six Thursday, Croy received exclusive possession and use of the house's master bedroom. However, he and the tardy for the party singer have to share the common area and need permission to go into one another's awarded space. The court order also stated that they have to behave civilly toward each other, especially in front of their four minor children, whom they are currently in a custody battle over. Neither parent shall disparage the other parent in the presence of or earshot of the minor children. That's what the document stated. And Kim Zolciak originally filed for divorce from Croy in May of 2023, although they briefly reconciled. He filed for divorce for the second time just three months later. Now, I'm going to play a video for you guys because people are like just losing it over this one. Here we go. The best in the business. Everybody from LA to Georgia knows that. He has done a ton of my celebrity friends. They look incredible. I am here because I have lost a significant amount of weight, around 20 pounds. It's caused a lot of like loose skin on my legs and my arms. And he works magic with the loose skin. So I'm hoping to have. Okay, so people are thinking that right now, I mean, I'll just read you the comments so you guys can get like 
an idea of what people are saying. Hey, Kim, how about investing in your children, like securing a roof over their heads? Just a thought. I know the doctor said that he doesn't do freebies and she paid in full, but she must have gotten some compensation or a freebie. Why else would she be so vocal in public about the procedures? That's true. How do we tag the judge on this post? Everyone isn't the best. Everyone is the best in the business, according to her. Why would anyone listen to her? And has their judge, who is a female, seen this? Ugh. Not good, Kim Zolciak. I wanted to share this one too. This is from, the other one was from The Good, The Bad, and The Fake, which we love. But this one is from By Wig Hello Drama. And they said, this was Monica's mom's caption. I must set the record straight on this new promo that dropped today. The family at Monica Garcia stayed with in Pennsylvania were our downstairs neighbors and good friends from Arizona. Monica said, when I turned 12, my mom decided she wanted to chase her dream. So she dropped me off with the family in Pennsylvania and went and lived in New York. Now, By Wake Hello Drama had a theory, shared their thoughts and said, Monica could have really loved the family her mom dropped her off at, but it doesn't mean that she wasn't still hurt and traumatized from her mother leaving her at 12 years old. Kids want their moms, period. This is Monica's mom here to set the record straight. The story that Monica tells Heather in the new promo that dropped today is false. Monica knew the family. She was close to the family. They were our downstairs neighbors in Arizona. We lived in a condo building. They lived downstairs. We lived upstairs. Monica babysat with the boys. Monica spent time with the family. If I worked late, she would have dinner with this family. We were in the same ward building. We were friends. We were neighbors. She loved this family. She loved the mom. She loved the boys, and they loved her. I took a job in New York City. This was before Monica started school. So the plan was that Monica would stay with them in Pennsylvania while I went ahead to start my new job and look for an apartment in New York City. I could not find an apartment in my budget in a neighborhood that felt safe with a school district that felt safe for Monica. It was decided that it was safer for Monica to stay in Pennsylvania with this family. I visited on weekends. I called every night before she went to bed. She was there for one semester and then we moved back to Arizona. I don't know why Monica is telling these stories. One could say that's how she remembers it. Okay, maybe she doesn't remember me visiting her on weekends. Maybe she doesn't remember me calling every night before bed, but there is no way, no way that she doesn't remember how much she loved this family and how close she was to them. Hey, this is Monica. Okay. So what I'm gathering from this is I do think, and I'm seeing this with some of my siblings now, I do think that sometimes you grow up and you might tend to remember things a little bit differently. Um, and I think that, again, it goes back to this side, that side, and the truth somewhere in between. I think it's completely sad. And I feel like at this point, you know, at first I was like, Monica's mom maybe also wants to be a housewife. I don't think it's that. I think that she's trying to show, I think that there's a lot of eyes on this and she feels like she has a lot to answer for. And I think that Monica feels like she was betrayed at a certain point in her life. You can tell by the dynamic. It's sad. It's really, really sad. But guys, I want to hear what your thoughts are. Go ahead, smash that like button. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. And I'm going to do a poll in the community tab on the second channel over here, Up and Adam 2, and ask you guys if you're leaning more into believing Monica's mom or Monica herself. Happy Saturday.